This is a Japanese street. This is a Japanese street. And this is a Japanese street. They are each a bit different than the other. However, one thing they all have in common is that they are all better than the vast majority of streets you'll find in North America. My name is Nick. Subscribe for more international wheeling. When looking at the streets and roads of Japanese cities, you will quickly see a trend elevated freeways, massive arterial strodes lined with sidewalks and cycle tracks, but most commonly, endless miles of walkable and, for that matter, bikeable shared streets. And these streets serve as the backbone of urban life, filled with convenience stores, hotels, restaurants, homes, and most importantly, people. They come in different varieties, but generally speaking, they are made from the same recipe with two main ingredients, narrow and complex. And these characteristics, along with a few others, lead to a streetscape that feels safe, even in the presence of cars. And once you ride them, you'll likely be convinced, like I have been, that these streets are not only better than North American streets, but they make better bike streets than what we have in North America. And that's because there's more to it than just installing a 30 km per hour sign and calling it a day. I mean, they have those along with the occasional sign explicitly telling drivers to slow down, but the low speeds and safety of these streets is largely due to the design, which gives the subconscious signal to slow down. Let's take Ukiyo Ward's streets, for example, in Kyoto's west side, chock full of the first ingredient, narrow. Typically only room enough for one car to pass without scraping the wall, you'll often see drivers negotiating the right of way, waiting behind stopped trucks, or navigating around pedestrians and cyclists, all of which slow traffic. And if the street isn't naturally made narrow by the surrounding property, chicanes and bump outs can do the job, like this street in Tokyo. Compare this to many streets in North America, and the difference is clear. Wide open lanes with plenty of room to open up that throttle. The narrowness of these lanes isn't limited to the middle of the block. It also extends to intersections, affording limited vision to approaching traffic. And this is a feature, not a bug. Coming up on most intersections, you will be blind to traffic on perpendicular streets with the only preview visible on the occasional convex mirror mounted up high. This is counterintuitive to some, but this forces all but the most reckless to at least slow down to a near stop to make sure the way is clear. This is in stark contrast to many streets in North America, with wide clear zones at intersections. This often leads to people blowing through stop signs because they think the way is clear. These blind corners encourage safe yields and slow down traffic that might otherwise speed on through. And the second main ingredient in Japanese streets is complexity driveways, storefronts, homes, telephone poles, park trucks, unloading goods, and of course, due to the distinct feature of these streets, no sidewalks, there's people. People working, people walking, and people cycling. I like to think of it as organic traffic calming. And all of these things create ambiguity and uncertainty, which in a lot of cases requires caution and cooperation to navigate safely. Drivers are familiar with the ever-present pedestrian or cyclist and are therefore more likely to be expecting them. And this is a prime example of safety in numbers, a phenomenon that occurs when many people are engaged in a similar activity, like cycling, and enjoy a reduced likelihood of injury. Compare this to a bike route here in Vancouver, where the main ingredients are simple and wide, where the only common complexities are other drivers, some cyclists, and the double-edged sword that is street parking. This gives drivers the signal to let her rip, and they do. Speeding 20 over the 30 kph limit is the norm or 35 in this case. That was the worst one I've seen. And while we have speeding traffic along our bike routes, the Japanese have for the most part, people in cars following the speed limit of 20 to 30 kilometers per hour. And that's not just because they're famous for following the rules, it's also due to that complexity. A driver on these streets is used to seeing people pop out of doorways, navigating around stop trucks, other drivers, and watching out for cyclists flowing in both directions. This signals danger, so they are prepared for the unexpected by driving at an appropriate speed, leading to streets that feel safe enough for the majority of folks to cycle on even without anything indicating a cycling route, which is something that can often be found on many streets in cities like Kyoto. This typically comes in two forms, painted sharrows, which in conjunction with the aforementioned qualities of a typical Japanese street are fine. Do they really do anything? I don't think so. But the second form is much more compelling, edge lane roads, a solid white line on either side of the street, two dashed lines for cyclists in either direction, leaving a single lane for cars. And this affords room for everybody, but at the same time leads to ambiguous situations when trucks are parked on the side of the road or there's plenty of cycling and foot traffic. This forces everybody on the road to cooperate 
in this almost unconscious dance that keeps everybody moving, but at a more human pace. These are frequently used to great effect in the Netherlands for their bike streets and serve as a reminder that the streets are for everyone. So narrow, complex, decent bike lanes and slow traffic yields streets that feel safe and obligatory. They are actually safer and becoming more so every year, which is great, but you might have noticed a few things missing that might otherwise be part of a traffic calming stew. Okay, I'm done with the whole food analogy. It's kind of making me hungry, but daylighting, moto filters and speed bumps. First, daylighting at intersections. I believe unneeded in most places because as previously mentioned, the already narrow lanes and blind corners slow traffic. Modal filters do exist, but are typically more organic, like this small opening for pedestrians and cyclists, or these extremely narrow streets that would probably not accommodate even the smallest Japanese car. Though I did see signs along some narrow streets that forbid traffic during weekday morning rush hour, and that being said, I do think they could use more modal filtering. On multiple occasions, I saw cars rat running to avoid main arterials, but at least not speeding. As for speed bumps, at first I found it a bit perplexing that speed bumps are basically non-existent, but I soon realized, why would you need those if the street design already serves the function by slowing traffic, rendering them moot in most places? They could be used on some wider streets, but to be honest, I can only count on one hand the number of times I saw a speeding car on a local street. It's not a deal breaker. The fact that these are largely not needed really highlights what these traffic calming treatments are. Shoehorn solutions to unsafe street design. So what can we steal from the Japanese to make our streets safer? Well, there's only one thing really, which I will get to, but the narrow complex streets are the result of generations of development and density. I don't expect the clear zones along our streets to fill up with homes and shops anytime soon, which I think would be needed to get that complexity. But we can simulate some of it by reclaiming some parking to narrow streets, daylighting at intersections with curb extensions, adding extra speed humps to reduce speeds, and using modal filters to reduce through traffic. Yes, we've come full circle. Just because our traffic calming solutions are shoehorned in doesn't mean they don't work. And while I look forward to a time when we have an abundance of wonderful safe streets to walk and wheel on, these can do the trick. But the one thing we should steal immediately is the edge lane road and let it be known, just like the Dutch, that cars are guests on these bike streets. In the end, there is something beautiful about the simple safety of Japanese streets. Are they perfect? No. Many are not good enough spaces for folks who would only ride a bike where there is complete separation from car traffic. But by and large, the vast majority of the local streets are fit for most to hop on two wheels. There's a lot that we can learn from the way that Japan designs their streets. While we may not be able to copy them immediately, the fundamental qualities can be implemented so that the vast majority of our streets can not only be useful and offer safe passage for cyclists, but for everyone. If you want to see more cycling in Japan, their cars, drivers, and some more of these streets, get subscribed. With that, my name is Nick. Thanks for watching.